Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Fix My Coaster Layout. This is a collaboration between myself and Andrew from McMahon's RCT Station, uh, where we take user-submitted coaster layouts and we offer suggestions on how to improve them, whether that's through realism or flow or scenario play or whatever is requested in the submission. So last time around, we looked at Observe the Train, who gave us Tremors, a wooden coaster in his uh, large park, with uh, the task of adding a mid-course break run and just improving the overall flow and realism of the ride. So uh, I had already posted my video, and this is Andrew's attempt. Um, whereas I went for a kind of traditional CCI design, uh, Andrew went a little more GCI with his layout with some of these kind of more swooping corners. We still have some of those uh, CCI type dips here like we've got on this side, but we have some really nice nesting. I love this uh, final curve here up into the brake run. So a nice flat uh, turn off the lift hill, which is reasonably realistic for a GCI. Drop into that little airtime hill there, um, and then kind of the swooping corner, and then real kind of uh, a fast hill right here, uh, which is going to make some pretty great airtime, I would imagine, uh, as it wraps around up to the mid-course brakes. I like how this is lined up very nicely up alongside the lift hill. We uh, clear this with uh, just a little bit to spare. Um, same exact issue that I had with uh, the train getting there just a little bit too early. Uh, then we cross back over the layout and then wrap through. And uh, this second half wraps really, really well through everything. And then we also get this sort of uh, potentially unintentional duel there. I'm not entirely sure how intentional that was, but uh, it works really well. As we turn here, we can see these three all line up very nicely, uh, which is exactly what you're looking for. Nice little station uh, here, uh, very uh, clean, and uh, the landscaping really helps accentuate that with the kind of heavier bushes, some of these uh, rock sections here and there uh, throughout the whole thing, and a couple custom supports, which uh, is something that I kind of forgot about doing on mine, uh, so very nicely done there. Break run could probably be a little bit longer if we're going heavy realism, but um, you know, that's a, certainly a design choice uh, in this instance, and I think to fit in this little square here, uh, also without deleting these dueling coasters, which is what I did, um, I think this is a very nice fit. So, uh, very nice work here, and uh, definitely check out his video as well, which I'll uh, link here in the video description if you'd like to go see it. But today, let's uh, jump in and take a look at uh, today's submission. Today's submission comes from Thor II, who gives us a log flume. So we're going to branch out a little bit from coaster layouts today, and we're going to attempt a log flume. Uh, this is his Park Six Flags Coaster Kingdom, uh, and the log flume fits into this kind of rectangular space between this uh, El Toro-inspired wooden coaster and this Nitro-inspired hyper coaster. Uh, the ask was to uh, better fill the space with the log flume and uh, note any kind of realistic changes that can be done. Uh, as far as log flumes go, there's a lot of variety that you can do uh, with these, so there's really kind of no wrong way to do these in a lot of cases, so I'll offer some suggestions as we get in, but um, one of the comments was to keep the side friction coaster drop here. Uh, a lot of folks, when they want to do the steep drop on a log flume, since it's not part of the base game, will use a uh, water slide track, uh, which is totally valid, but... Uh, uh, Thor II prefers a uh, side friction coaster drop, so we're going to do that instead, and we'll do some extra layering. Uh, we've already got some good layering here with the uh, bobsled track, uh, which we will bring into ours as well, and we'll kind of explain through that whole process here as well. And actually, the station is pretty good as well. Um, so we've got um, an exit station here and an entrance station on this side. We are going to change that up just a little bit, which I will certainly talk about. Um, and uh, just nicely put together. And a uh, pretty simple theme here. Got some mine theming uh, throughout, which I will try and keep uh, a part of that as well. And uh, just all of those uh, little details. So, um, without further ado, let's jump into our build. All right, so here we are with our uh, ride layout. I cleared out the peeps and I closed the park just to give us a little bit more cleanliness to work from. All right, so first things first, I think we need to get all this cleared out since we're gonna do some retheming and all of this. So let's turn on all of our different parts and pieces here and let's just 
demo out all of this. Alright. More to come. Actually, I didn't necessarily mean to take that pathway, so we'll bring that back in a minute. Alright, so cleared out now. We can see that it's basically a square track with kind of these two indentation sections. Um, in general, you want to see log flume track really have a lot of meandering corners and things like that. So uh, we're going to really try and push on that as far as functionality goes, as well as um, as well as maybe do a tunnel, maybe do some crossover sections, so a little bit and bits and pieces like that. So um, let's so I can get this fence. Let's get that real quick. There, and then I will go ahead and put back our pathway here, which we can adjust later. All right, there we go. So I kind of like this general layout form, but um, we're going to change it up just a little bit. And we'll mess with some landscaping a little bit later, too, because I think this, you know, there's a large cutaway right here. I don't think we want to have that and we can you can definitely see the use of the mountain tool which is great you know for your initial movement of landscape but then you really want to play around with it a little bit because you don't necessarily want these peak tills um like you would see in a lot of kind of the scenario play you really want to adjust that and smooth it so it looks a little more natural overall um also before you get going too hard i want to just edit this um to do this. Um, reason being it's just a smoother corner then you don't have the straight sections in between. Uh, we could do more to the coaster but we're going to leave it alone for now. Okay, um, this section with the station is raised. Let's bring that back down to regular height and then we can you know, kind of adjust this as we go. Um, I am just going to demolish this. Keep in mind what it looks like because we're going to really try and keep that same overall shape I think. Okay, so let's look at a start that has some extents back here because we want to have our, our drop that leads sort of into this ending bit and then our station. So one of my philosophies of log flumes is that you really want to have your large drop at the end. Now, not everybody does that, not every flume has that, but you really want it to build up to that climax of excitement. And typically with a log flume, you're going to have like one mid drop and then like a big drop at the end. In RCT, the flumes are slow, so they're not really as exciting as they are in real life, which is a little bit disappointing. It would be nice to move it along a little faster, but nonetheless, you know, we, we do with what we can. Um... We can go a couple ways as we're looking at manufacturers for the. You can go Arrow, which is sort of the original log flume. You could go uh, Hopkins. Uh, they're now under Whitewater, although those are two across, and, and we don't really have the cars for that here, so or the vehicles. So we'll kind of disregard that one. If you go Modern, you can go Hafima. Uh, those are two across also. Um, you could also you know do a number of different other ones. I mean, there's Intamin, uh, Reverchon uh, builds them too. Uh, and then Mach uh, Rides also has traditional um, flumes, too. Um, and then as far as station goes, we can do the revolving station, uh, where we kind of build it on a corner. Um, the station that we had here previously was a long exit and a long entrance, um, which we can do that as well. But what we're going to do is actually put in a double station. So let's put it right here. And then what we would do is... Um, come back since we can make this functional. I've done a hacking tutorial for it if you check that playlist on my channel. But uh, in this case, we're just going to have the one side running. Let's turn on our clearances and we'll just drop this in for the visuals. So then that essentially gives us our entrance here, our exit here. Looks like those are turned off. Yeah. There we go. So this way we can bring the entrance down into in between the two and then our exit here out this side. So then this is going to kind of run all the way back. Um, 
and then we'll have like a drop in a little hill here. Um, let's make this a little more meandery. Uh, let's do a couple S bends here. Like I said, you really want to avoid straight sections except for runouts of a drop. Uh, but then, aside from that, you really want to keep it curving. Uh, okay. So we said we wanted to do a um, tunnel. I said earlier that I wanted to do that. So let's bring this down a little bit. Let's bring this over. And I love the combination of curve into S bend and you know whatever whatever else you want to do with it. So we can I did do this. Hmm. Okay, you know, I I think just getting this lined up a little bit. Let's make let's align this a little better. Let's move this one more over. So we'll put back this one two three four five is what we had before and then let's because i don't want this right up against the train so i want it at least a little bit closer uh, okay so we'll get our double station in there we'll do a little drop and you can do little drops throughout but uh, just to kind of simulate that fall off as the ride kind of goes goes through its paces. Um, let's do the tunnel right here. So let's bring this whole thing up. And I'm sure we can do some other things here. Let's turn off supports for a minute. That way we can support this train so it doesn't sit up on a trestle the whole time. And we might even just put it in tunnel as well here a little later on like where this was pulled down right over here that may be a good option for us but for now let's kind of stick with this and then we can kind of figure figure out the rest of this as we go and some of this I may save for our theming segment okay so this gets us one off of the railroad which is good And we'll raise that up just a little bit there. And then put the curve in, and then we are at five height. Uh, I think maybe this is a good spot to pop out. We'll do that. Okay. Then we'll start our lift here. So this will be the first lift. Let's go to... Judging by the space we've got to work with, let's go to 40. And then we'll immediately get into our drop. We'll get down to about 20 here. And the reason that I'm going to kind of this point, we'll put in this our splash out section here, which we want that. And the reason I go straight from lift to drop is I feel like that's a good way to do some of these early um, sections, like this early hill, where you have a lift and a drop. And then you want to keep a lot of your ride kind of close to the ground. Now, this is definitely a, um, a note that has exceptions in plenty of log flume cases. I've seen plenty that stay up. Quite high off the ground for a lot. I just kind of like the idea of it staying closer to the ground, kind of meandering along, and then we do a final lift with a section that's high up and then our big drop. So you kind of build up that anticipation. So now we're going to do our little meandering section here over until we get to the lift. So basically what we've done is we're going to copy that same shape of layout that was originally done here uh, in Thor's uh, layout, but we're just going to put a crossover here so that way we get more or less a figure eight of track. So curving sections here are pretty easy. We just kind of alternate corners 
with S pens and drop a straight piece in there every once in a while just to get a little bit different shaping. Crossover right here, we'll put in a little tiny drop. And we can do a curve right after that. We don't need to worry too hard about those bits. All right, now we have our mountain here, so let's start our lift. Okay. Now we're not going to do the big drop just yet, but we are going to do a little drop off of it. I suggest every time you build a lift hill to put a small drop off of that lift hill. Basically, we are getting to the point where we have our flume on this conveyor, which is what this is, and we're disengaging the conveyor by going down. Uh, kind of like when you have a roller coaster, you typically have a little bit of a dip afterwards, like a pre-drop. Okay, so now we'll have our, we'll call our high section, although we are still up on the mountainside. And uh, circle around here a little bit, and this should line up, which it does, right here. Okay. And now in preparation for the drop, we are going to do um, a little lift. So this is another thing that I suggest before every drop that's that's of any kind of size, put a little lift in here. One, because then you can have a hold section. Um, and this is purely theoretical. It's not something that can happen in the game. But you've got this little bit right there. And it just kind of gets just held up right there. And now let's um, drop arbitrary ride type changes on. And then let's uh, just change this to a coaster here so we can do our drop and then we'll change it back. So since it's a pretty steep drop, I am going to extend that a little bit. We're going to put a flat section in and then we have the airtime hill that was put in uh, by Thor the second initially and what was requested to remain. And then we'll put a flat section on top of that. All right, so let's go back to Flume. So this is kind of how it sets up. And the Airtime Hill is, again, not without precedent. Uh, something like Cole Cracker at Hershey Park that has one. Um, Dudley do Ride Ripsaw Falls at Universal, that has one. Although that's actually done on track, uh, like a coaster track. Hershey's has a little bit of a, uh, an actual hill in the channel, uh, which is kind of what we're sticking for here. All right, so as far as layering goes, and we'll look at a little bit of this, but then the rest of it will catch on theming. Uh, there was an ask to do this in... Um, in the uh, side friction. Um, it was noted that uh, Thor liked the look of this better than the uh, water slide or the water slide track, which is what you would typically use for these kind of drops. Um, but I can understand uh, the look uh, or the concerns about the look. So we're going to do this. To help it out in the middle here, we can also go through and take uh, this flume track. Is it the lift hill? We can actually get rid of it. We'll come back and build a drop this way. Now we can't build it right on top or else it's going to accidentally merge uh, with our side friction track. So I'm going to do it this way. We'll swap this below and that gets rid of the supports. Drop this to 19, swap it. Drop this to 17, swap it. And then we'll take this and drop it to 16 and swap it. So now we have water the whole way through. Now, if you look closely, obviously the water goes in the opposite direction, which is not quite what you want, but uh, still it works okay. I like to have catwalks on some of the higher sections um, and also both of my lift hills. So we're gonna use wooden coaster for that uh, because it has a nice catwalk already built in. Uh, so we're gonna turn on arbitrary or allow building at track invalid heights, which uh, again is a kind of key thing here because you can put this just below. And then we just build it across the entire thing. Unfortunately, uh, based on the kind of draw order of this and the fact that it's sitting below, you have all these great supports, which um, we can get rid of again by taking any one of these and moving the surface above that track height. Just like this. So I'm not going to do them all, but that's how you do it. You just swap it like that. And then we would do one more over here. 
for the lift, but I don't think I want to do the drop on this side, um, only because it's just kind of open uh, here, um, and there's really no reason for us to need a catwalk here. We're going to you know, drop down. There wouldn't be an evacuation on this point. Now, as far as a splashdown goes, I like to have actual water here. I don't mind touching the water, but on the whole, I like to stay up above it. Um, so I try and only touch the water when I need to, uh, or if, you know, absolutely have to. Um, for channels, you can make it look a whole lot better with custom scenery, but we're going to use what we've got here as far as this goes. Um, and then for things like this, where we don't really have a channel um, or a, a pond underneath to catch the spray, uh, we'll do something just where we kind of hint at it by lowering a section and then kind of bringing the water up underneath of it so that it looks like the water goes somewhere. You really want to pay attention to where your water is going theoretically. Um, so you you want a water retention. You don't just want to be soaking the ground uh, next to the ride. That doesn't really make sense. Um, so let's put in our station here one more time. There we go. We'll do our exit. We'll have to rotate these, which if you don't know how. That's uh, under Tile Inspector here. Select the tile with your entrance on it, and then just use this to rotate it. So, spin that all around and connect it up just however you like. And what I think we'll do is take this exit over here, and then underneath of the, the airtime hill will be kind of a nice feature. Um, last bit here, let's uh, test this. Ooh, there are quite a few. Cut that down just a little bit. I don't want too, too many. Um, but we do want to be able to space them out so that they cover kind of the whole area. Um, all right, let me speed this up just a little bit here. We're going at three times speed at the moment just to kind of see how everything runs, make sure that we're doing all right. All right, to so pick this up two miles per hour here, we'll see that splash down. All right, we're already pretty much at nearly two at the corner, so that's good. We're not hitting the corner too fast. You don't want a big drop into a corner. Um, you want that straight section for the splashdown and the slowdown um, before you go anywhere. All right, so the key thing that I want to pay attention to here is just to make sure that we don't lose all of our speed on that hill. Um, we are going to lose some of it because the uh, just the way that the game mechanics work, we're going to lose a fair amount. But let's take a look. All right. Five and then down into... Our drop so that's okay i don't i don't mind that we could go one less and it will be a little a little less overall um but you know i think this is fine we could also put the uh launched lift hill track in there but honestly this works just fine for me um so i think we'll we'll leave it at that but the next phase is really theming because what makes a, a log flume is the theming in my opinion so Let's take a look and see uh, what I did for that. Here's our final log flume layout with a fair bit of theming on top of it. Now, the theming is really kind of what makes or breaks a log flume in a lot of cases. Um, certainly, there are plenty of flumes out there that don't really have any kind of theming in them. But uh, in this case, as the request was made for theming, and just kind of in general, I think it's... Uh, prudent to uh, spend a little bit more time as far as decoration goes on your rides. So uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, first of all, we've got our station here, which <clears throat> kind of using the same uh, building materials as I've been using on some of our past submissions here uh, with the uh, wooden fence stacked up as walls and then the uh, wood uh, roof and just sort of this mine scenery throughout. But and to be honest, it's appropriate here, and we're changing up the building form uh, a little bit as well. So we've got um, kind of a, a little building here that's going to house our double station. We've got this uh, covering across our bridge here, and just a little bit of details throughout. I did this little arch over top. Um, I did try and stick with the existing uh, scenery elements that were included on the bench, which was a mix of mostly no custom scenery stuff, but there was a few custom elements. So I did keep those in place as well. Now, as far as layering goes, 
I did a couple of uh, bits and pieces here, just in addition to what we had looked at already uh, beyond the wooden coaster track here. Uh, I did go ahead and add some uh, bobsled track here for guides, uh, or not guides so much as extended um, fiberglass, I suppose, which I kind of put in here judiciously. So it's really only in locations where we're going to see a little bit more speed, a little bit more um, movement. Now, granted, you're not going to see that in the actual game, but you got to think about it in terms of this ride is coming down here to the splashdown and it's going to be going a little bit quicker around this corner so we've got that one and then up top here we've got one just off the lift hill and that's pretty much it so i i more or less left that alone i did do a custom a couple of custom supports here using the uh, observation tower um, as well and then this uh, single rail suspended through here uh, for a spine i just kind of made it look a little bit uh, kind of heftier, I suppose. Um, you can certainly do a number of different things, and if you're happy with the regular supports, then those are fine too. I did go through and actually remove a number of those supports, so if you uh, pop open Tile Inspector here, and you swap the track below the surface here, you can see there's a support, and now it's gone. So I pulled out every other one or so, because we really didn't need all that, uh, but it simplifies it out a little bit. But we've got... Um, a little bit of a progression here as far as just our little storyline goes and granted we haven't thought through that too too much but we've got our initial start here into this kind of trench with our mine area here we go into the mine itself uh, come up and drop down into the little mine village here as we swerve around and then we hit our uh, final climb here up into our um, kind of mine tower with the uh, uh, kind of smokestack type things here and and then a final enclosed uh, bit before the drop. I did go ahead and layer some um, uh, log flume, or not log flume, some water slide track underneath of the uh, drop here just to help make that look a little bit heftier maybe, uh, close up the kind of openness on the bottom of it. Um, that way we still keep in the um, side friction track as was requested, but we also get a little bit more thickness to our drop, which I think looks a little bit better. And the sign up top here, which kind of made sense from a visual standpoint since it is a pretty big, um, you know, kind of billboard location, I suppose. Um, but that's all we had. So a little bit of theming goes a long way. Um, and here we didn't spend too, too long on this, but we themed it up relatively well. When you have a layout that's as big as this one is, you uh, really want to cluster it at the important parts. So, you know, throughout the layout, there's not a whole heck of a lot of theming, but we spent a lot of time on this final lift hill and our drop, just those really visual locations. We spent a lot of time around our station, and we also did a little bit of this kind of standard scenery stacked throughout. So not a whole lot of... Um, real heavy stuff throughout but you could you can definitely go through and add a lot more in there if you need to but anyway that is all for today that is uh, a log flume uh, and certainly this opens it up if anybody has other rides that they would like to submit obviously we're still going to focus on coasters but if you're interested in the log flume or you know something else let us know and we will absolutely take a look for you um, if you would like to submit a layout for yourself, uh, please send it to fixmycoasterlayout at gmail.com. Uh, we accept RCT1 and 2 files, so that's uh, TD4 or SV4 or TD6 or SV6 files or the new .park uh, file that uh, the uh, OpenRCT um, develop section comes in. So um, any of those, and uh, we will add it to our list. We got a pretty nice backlog here, so no uh, guarantees quite when we're going to get to them all, but uh, we will certainly make an effort to get to all of them here at some point here in the future. Um, thank you for all the comments so far. We appreciate uh, everybody commenting on the videos and letting us know your thoughts. So uh, please let us know here what you think of this one, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time around. So until next time, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Bye now.